Hi, welcome back. In this lesson, we'll dig into properties. Properties are the backbone of Equities Lab. They are the database of stock records. Each stock record has many fields of information. Each field is called a property. The Equihack language is one way to gain access to this trove of information. So you may be wondering, what properties are available for me to use? Can I look at them in the raw? How do I access them when writing an Equihack screener? We'll work on giving you answers in this lesson. You used a couple of properties in the first lesson, PE and market cap. You were told there were thousands more to pick from. Let's see how you find them. Go to the Tools tab in the lower left corner and click on it. Locate the dark blue area at 9 o'clock on your screen with the Open Filter By box on it. This is where you start when you're looking for something like a property. Many of Equihack's tools are displayed in the area below this box. These tools include properties, operators, and formulas. You can view each of these categories by clicking on the icons to the right of the Filter By box. We're only interested in properties for now. You trigger the display to show just the properties by highlighting the square blue ledger icon to the right of the filter box. Click on these boxes a few times to see how it works. You will know when you have just the properties are listed. They are dark green. All the words start with capital letters. Most are preceded with a green arrow we call a disclosure triangle. Click on one of the disclosure triangles. The list pops open showing the actual properties within. Actual properties are identified with a ledger icon. You should check out the description in the box to the right to ensure that it is the value you want. Look at the last line. Keywords. They are an alternate way to find similar properties. Let's look for ways to find properties with the filter by box. Start by typing D E P R. As you type, notice the choices below change. My goal was to find the depreciation property. Quite a list shows up. As you look down the list, you see the depreciation value showing on the balance sheet, the income statement, and the cash flow statements and also as part of the EBITDA values. Enter BAL instead. Notice that all the possible entries on a balance sheet are listed. Balance sheet is not a property, it's just one of the keywords to help you find properties that are available. Look at the third entry, Reinsurance Balances Payable. In the description to the right, we see that it is only available for companies in the insurance industry. Using this property in a general purpose screener might exclude all stocks except some in the insurance industry. Be careful. Let's back out BAL and enter SNAP instead. It's another keyword. The snapshot keyword produces a shorter list of balance sheet properties. Someday, when you have a chance, try the keyword ratios, which shows you all the interesting ratios used in the investment community, where you'll see a number of other interesting properties. Suppose you still don't know if a possible property choice has information you want. There's a great way to see, and you can see its change in value over time. You are not limited to just one day's value in the definition. You don't even have to use the Equihack language to do this. On the home page, type any stocks ticker in the research stock box, for example, AAPL, short for Apple. You will see a three year graph showing up in the bottom part. In this case, it starts in the fall of 2012 when Apple's price was high, the green line. The Standard & Poor 500 shows as a brown line at the top. 
Let's add some other properties. We click on the Tools tab. Notice the box to the far right. Show in Results. We're going to move a couple of property names to this box. Start with PE. Drag it over. It's the top entry now in the Show in Results box. Let's do Earnings per Share. Drag it over. Then click the Results tab again and wait a couple of seconds. Now you see the same chart for Apple with two additional lines. The red one for PE with a red scale to the right and the blue one for earnings per share with its blue scale to the right. This lets you see the day by day values for four properties over a three year period. In addition you can evaluate a number of relationships. For example during 2013 and 2014 Apple's price was going up but earnings were going down. The red PE suggests that this increase in price was due to expansion of the PE ratio for reasons other than historical earnings. Let's review this knowledge and play with various ways you can enter property names into a screener. The four basic ways are 1. Enter part of a plain English name on the screener's line and select one of the prompted choices. 2. Find the property in the Tools section and drag it to your screener or click on it if your screener box is highlighted. 3. Enter a code name, which is an abbreviated plain English name spelled exactly the way Equihack expects. Or 4. Enter a shortcut name that I'll show you how to create. Let's work our way through these choices, screening for the most recent accounts receivable balance as one of our tests. On the home page, click Create Stock Screener. Give it any name and press Done. Click on the red question mark box. Choice 1 is to enter part of a plain English name. Type ACC. A bunch of accounts payables show. We want receivables. R receivables follows P so let's scroll down quickly and see what we can find. Do this by pulling the slider on the right. About a dozen entries down we finally arrive at Accounts Receivable 1Q. Click on it and it fills the box. Choice 2 extracts the property from tools. There are several ways to do this. They all accomplish the same thing. The choice is yours. The first option assumes you forget everything that you learn in this video. Clear the box on the screener and then click on it. You'll see a drop down. Roll down to add content and then across to add property. Click on it. The bottom half of the screen then shows you where to go. This is normally an extra step. If not, remember that you could have also clicked on the Tools tab and highlighted the Properties Ledger icon by the filter box. So regardless how we got here, we are in luck. Accounts Receivable is the third choice on the list. It is a group name, not the actual property name. But here is a trick when you want to use the most current value of a property. Just drag the group name to the empty box in your screener. Equihex will select the top property choice. You didn't have to click on the group to open to see all the choices within. They were listed in the box to the right. You saw that the top entry was the one you wanted. However, if you don't want the top property, do click the group open and grab the one you want, dragging it to your screener. In this case, we're going to replace the one quarter ago with two quarters ago.
There's another way to get a selected property in the tools area on your screeners line, but the empty box has to be selected and waiting. Then when you click on the property in the tools, it appears in the screener. Let's clear the screener box, then click on one quarter ago in the tools area. So much for extracting properties from the tools area. The third way to enter a property is with a code name. You may never have to do this. If you understand code names, you have a foundation to create shortcut names, so bear with me. Code names are the unique names Equihack uses to find fields of information in a record. They look very much like their plain English names. In fact, you've already been using them. Let's look at one again. Accounts receivable one quarter ago. In the definition to the right, its code name shows in parentheses on the second line. Accounts receivable one Q. You can enter that exact code name if you want. That's all there is to code names. The fourth way to enter a property in a screener is with a shortcut name. Shortcut names come from code names. In this example, notice that each word starts with a capital letter. A for accounts, R for receivable, the number 1, followed by a capital Q. These are also words in the code name. The code name consists of four short shortcut elements. A, R, 1, Q. When you enter this shortcut name, Equihack prompts you with its code name below the box. Roll over the name, prompted, and it gives you a definition of the property you are about to select. Click on it, and Equihack fills the box with the code name without any typos. Let's play with this a little to really make the point. Enter. O. G. L. F. D O D O seven Y and press return. That is some really long property name. Just to continue this point, in the next box, enter O S T I seven Y and press return. You get one long statement, but I hope you see how easy it is to use shortcuts, even with long property names. Normally you'll use much shorter choices. Let me show you another. First, here is a way to delete this long line of code. Highlight the greater than operator in the middle of the line and click delete in the drop down box. Poof, it's gone. The next example combines everything on a one-line shortcut that then explodes into a two-line screener. Remember in our first lesson we showed you how to screen for large companies with low PEs? It took two lines to code. Let's do it the shortcut way. Enter PE space less than 10 and ampersand MC space greater than 3 B and press return. It explodes to this. Super fast and easy, yes? We'll show you more tricks like this in future lessons. That covers about 95% of what you need to know about entering properties. Let's stop there and dig into the system's commands in the next lesson. Thanks for listening and watching. I'll see you in lesson three.